Hey everybody, how's it going? Uh, what we got here is a 2007 Yamaha TTR125L. I recently acquired this motorcycle from a friend of mine. Um, he had it, rode it some, um, you know, got busy, work, stuff like that. It kind of just got parked in his shed. Uh, best we can remember, it's been somewhere between 8 and 10 years since he put it in there. Uh, didn't really do any prep work on it. He just kind of pulled it in there and forgot about it. So um, he said everything was good on it when he parked it. I got it home, looked at it a little bit. Um, I actually already filmed this intro one time, and uh, turns out the card that I was using wasn't compatible with my camera, so I lost all that. We're kind of I, I had some you know a fair amount of footage. Uh, did some things. The my first thought was that, you know, I would clean the tank out, clean the carburetor out. Um, I thought those were the two things that were going to be, you know, the biggest issues after after it's sitting for all that time. So one of the things I did, I, I did take the tank off, and I was looking at it. It's kind of hard to tell, but it, it had a horrible smell, obviously, um, completely varnished up. I took the petcock out of the bottom of the tank and I had to pry it out so it, it was in really bad shape and so that got me thinking you know if the tank was that bad what's the carburetor look like uh, normally I'm, I'm more than happy to tear into a carburetor uh, I think uh, there's something kind of neat about taking something that's all roached out and you know fixing it and making it work again but in this particular case uh, he gave me the motorcycle, which, you know, I thought was pretty awesome of him. So I have absolutely nothing in the bike. Uh, no money at all. He even brought it to me. So I didn't even have to go get the thing. But um, so in this case, I thought, you know, it'd be worth it to throw a couple hundred bucks at it. I mean, the, the bike's pretty unhurt. There, there's a lot of little things from sitting, but it's in really good shape. And, you know, it can't have many hours on it. But, um... So having said that, I went ahead and ordered a new gas tank, a new petcock, and a new carburetor. Um, and I switched all those out. Again, I had all that on camera, but I lost it all because of the card issue. So thus far, uh, and, and I may still tear into that carb um, just to see how bad it was. I didn't even bother to look at it. But... Um, like I said, it was an aftermarket tank, but everything, you know, matched up perfectly. There was no issues at all. Um, if I can go around here, kind of show you. Uh, there's the new carb. It was pretty cut and dry. Um, I even used the old, uh, the plunger and the choke cable and everything. It, I figured I'd give it a shot. If it didn't work, I'd tear it off and switch them out with the new stuff but it it was fine it was literally you know it's got the I don't know how well you can see it but it's got the the plunger the screw top on the carburetor same thing with the choke you just I just unscrewed it and back into this one everything worked fine um so I did all that and I actually uh got it cranked it had a little trouble cranking it I wound up having to uh pour a little gas in the cylinder once I did that it fired right up um, but as I rode it a little bit I started noticing some little things um, this particular model of the the 125 actually has electric start on it uh, of course the battery was dead but I did hook a jumper to it and I can't get any power to the starter um, I didn't go any further with it I haven't checked fuses I don't know if, if the solenoids bad I'd that's something we need to look at. A um, couple other little things. The the tires are dry rotted, obviously, but uh, they're holding there. So I'm not exactly, you know, doing motocross with it. We're just putting around the field here. So um, like I said, I, that's not something that has to be done right now. Um, the chain, the chain is it's pretty rusty, pretty crusty, makes a lot of noise. Um, so I want to, and it's also incredibly loose um, I think the standard is somewhere around three finger widths midway the swing arm 
and uh, we got considerably more than that so I want to get that adjusted um, good news is we got plenty to work with they're almost you know all the way in so um, that shouldn't be an issue another thing I noticed the oil in it looked good uh, looked like it had just been changed but again uh, sat in one place for all those years so I want to get the oil changed this cover sorry this cover the gasket is leaking in several places nothing bad it's not pouring out but you know you get the idea um, I don't have that gasket yet um, but I'm gonna order it get that handled um, other than that I, I think the biggest deal is gonna be the starter problem I don't know if the starter is frozen up again could be the the solenoid could be something as simple as a fuse I don't know but I've got a new battery ordered uh, I'm sorry I have the new battery so I'm gonna get the battery put in and get those few things done I not not as interesting as the other things but I didn't want to scrap the video after losing all that footage so um, we'll get those few things we'll get the chain adjusted and get the oil changed see if we can get the starter going um, hopefully you know you guys can hear it run see it move around I just I still thought it was a neat project you know to take a bike that's been sitting in a shed for 10 years and uh, you know make it live again so uh, that's the plan for now but uh, I'm gonna get everything set up and I'll be right back with you All right, I think what I'm gonna do is go ahead and uh, get the oil draining out while we're working on some other things Changing the wall on these things is just ridiculously simple. Um, there's no filter on them. There's, this is the drain bowl here. It's a 17. Um, it only takes, I think it's a thousand cubic centimeters or something like that, which equates to a quart. Um, so that works out good. I didn't have time to uh, get to the Yamaha place, so I wound up going to the parts store and I found. Uh, some Lucas motorcycle oil. That's what I decided to go with. Like I said, the oil in it looked looked pretty good. I don't think it had been in there long before he parked it, but uh so while that's draining. Let's move around here. Get the battery cover off. Again, um, one bolt. Ten millimeter. As is almost everything on this bike, a ten millimeter. I lied. There's two bolts. Okay, now you can see the uh, what I was talking about with the solenoid. There's a fuse on each side. I pulled them out. And looked at them they look okay but I want to get the battery in and uh, get a test light on them see make sure it's not that simple before we move forward but uh, let me run and grab the uh, the battery get my test light bring you right back all right sorry about that I was trying to get you in a spot where we can both see um,
that's going to be the best part of putting that new battery in. That retainer sliding out when I tip the battery. It needs six hands. this one first because I don't know if you can see it but it's got tabs to keep the retainer in it and it'll work on this side but the other side and I just realized they need to be the other way Time. You wouldn't be able to keep it in there. chance that's lined up. Huh. How lucky. Now this side's gonna be a dream. Okay. Right, let me grab the key and the test light. I'll be right back. All right, let's see what happens. So, cylinder's clicking. Let's grab our Tesla. Something I learned the hard way. Test your Tesla. Spent two hours trying to trace a wire, only to figure out that uh, a bulb was burning out in your Tesla the whole time. We don't want that. These are where the fuses are that I was talking about. So I, I took them out and looked at them and they looked okay but okay
actually that fell out. <clears throat> I don't know if it was in there right or not. Okay, so I'm thinking this one is going to be. Once you activate the starter, we should have power here. And we do not. Which means we're not getting power out the other side of the solenoid. Let's check the connectors here. Everything looks clean. I don't know if clean is the word I'd use, but not corroded. Yeah. yeah, let's not do that since there's no oil in it. <laughs> so we have a bad solenoid. Nothing we can do about that tonight. So put it back together. Probably should have ordered one, but I didn't. I didn't want to do that. I find out that you know the starter was locked up, and I bought a solenoid for nothing. But so at least now we know what the problem is. I'll get one on the way for now. This cover put back on. I gotta remember how it went. Yeah. to the putting oil in it. Alright, I put the uh, drain plug back on the other side while I was moving the camera around. Um, like I said, this is the uh, oil I wound up going with. Spin this around and see if Of course they recommend Yamalu, but the closest Yamaha place is about 40 miles from me, so um, kind of hard to find time sometimes. Like I say, if you do the math, the, uh, the capacity is something like I think it's like 0.946 quarts, so you're not going to hurt anything putting the full quart in. Plus we're leaking a little bit, so won't hurt to add a little more.
should be good to go. And I think next we're going to jump on uh, getting that chain adjusted. So let me get you repositioned where you can see. Be right back. Alright, so the first thing we need to do is get the uh, rear tire up in the air so it spins freely. Um, I actually went to Harbor Freight and bought a little $20 scissor jack. And uh, I think that's going to be fine. So. Should be good enough. Now, let's get on to the rear tire. All right. We'll start there. The, you can see that bolt right there. There's one on each side. It's a 17. Um, all you got to do is break them loose. So get that, and then I'll bring you a little closer and let you see how the adjuster works. Need more tool than we got. Let me get some air hooked up. Stand by. All right, I brought a little more high end this time. All right, that nut came off, but you don't have to take it all the way off. You don't want it any looser than just to be able to move these. You see how when you move it, it pulls the wheel back. So you want to do that the same on both sides. And basically what that does is keeps the, the wheel lined up. It's pretty simple. Right, that's not quite good enough, so let's go another click. <clears throat> just about right. Much better. I think while we've got it up in the air, I want to go ahead and oil the chain. So, let's 
see if I can get you guys a little closer for that. Again, Yamaha has a special chain lube they recommend, but this is what I settled for. I found it at O'Reilly's. I'm sure you can get it most anywhere, Walmart, any of the parts stores. Uh, it's normally pretty good stuff, so we're going to try that. Anyway, you get the idea. I'm not going to make you sit through uh, all of that, but get that knocked out and I'll bring you back in. Alright, so it's actually tomorrow. Um, got the oil chain. It looks a, a little, got the chain oil, excuse me. Uh, still pretty crusty, but now it's wet and crusty, so that's better. Um, after I went in last night, I jumped online. I went ahead and ordered the uh, the gasket there. I um, also ordered an air filter, which I didn't mention. The one that was in it, it looked like it was in really good shape. I took it out, and when I went to pull it off, it, it just uh, it was jelly. It just disintegrated. So got a new one of those on the way. Um, I was gonna get the the solenoid from the Yamaha place, so I could go ahead and get that done but they had to order it too and it was a hundred bucks I bought one online for like thirteen dollars it's supposed to be here in two days so uh, we'll see how many cranks that thirteen dollar one lasts but uh, going over the footage last night the video is getting pretty long um, I think we're like 35 minutes now so I think I'm gonna go ahead and kill it here uh, nobody wants to listen to me talk for 30 minutes so I figured I'd call it um, like I say, when we when we come back, I, I think I'm going to do a second video on all the other stuff. We'll get the the plug changed out. I noticed when I was riding it that it runs really good. And as you as you could probably tell last night when we jumped the uh, solenoid, that was a cold start. It hasn't been touched in a week, and uh, no choke, anything. It cranked right up and tried to run. So everything's pretty much dialed in. But at high speeds, at high RPMs, rather, uh, it wants to break up and I'm pretty sure it's just the plug, so I'm going to swap that out. I don't I don't think it's a carburetor issue. Uh, we'll get that done. We'll try to get the gasket changed, get the air filter put in, and uh, get that solenoid situation figured out so we can actually have a an electric start. Um, it, it's easy to kick start, but, you know, old fat guy, so if I can have an electric start, why not? Anyway, guys, I appreciate you hanging out with me, um, trying to get the channel started, so... If you liked what you saw, man, just think about throwing me a like and subscribing. Try to get this thing going. But, again, I will see you on the next one, and we'll get this thing wrapped up and take it for a ride. Thanks, guys.